can you share a little bit of your experiences, Donia, about, mm -hmm. about, the, about this familial risk and genetic testing for you? Mm -hmm. So I am a BRCA1 carrier, BRCA1 mm -hmm. carrier, and I didn't have a sense of guilt. I felt like a light bulb went on mm -hmm. because as I look back in my father's family, there was cancer everywhere. And so for me, I really saw it as oh, okay, Makes now, now huh? the family needs to know because there's something we can do. And there's, there's maybe genetic components to lots of cancers. Mm -hmm, we just happen right? to know about this one. Um, and there's therapies that can be targeted towards it. So I felt fortunate in that way. But I did want to bring up one thing. You were talking about the hereditary tests that people mm -hmm. take. It's interesting. I, I did one of those, and I tested negative for the BRCA1 in that test, mm -hmm. and, I, wow. and I'm not negative, so, it's yeah. super important and very practical nowadays because these commercial, uh, these direct-to-consumer tests mm -hmm. are available, but what people don't realize is they may test for one specific mutation. Like a hotspot mutation. You got it, yeah. like the most common mutation in these cohorts of patients and not test for others. So you may be negative for that, but that doesn't mean that there is no alternate mutation that exists. And it's, I've had patients walk in and say, no, no, I know I'm not BRCA mutated. Look, I did this Testing. commercial test and it says I'm not. And then you have to go through the process of explaining why yes. that's not a definitive test and what else we need to consider. Right. Okay, so that's a very important point. Can you, can you expand on that a little bit? That means maybe you can, can you expand a little bit on like the BRCA gene, the BRCA1 gene, it's a long gene. There are different mutations that can happen. Some are variants of un, you know, unknown significance. Not every BRCA, BRCA1 mutation is pathogenic. Correct. Can you kind of expand on that a little bit sure. so that you know, uh, some people watching this can understand? Sure, certainly. Uh, like you mentioned, a gene is, is a large piece of information and abnormalities and mutations can occur in several places in a gene. It may not impact the function of the gene with a, a specific mutation or alteration. So when you do genetic testing, they test the gene to look for mutations. And if it's in a reputable company, they're testing the gene, essentially looking in the areas where they see most frequent aberrations or alterations, covering a large portion, if not the entirety of the gene, depending on where it's being done. Variants of undetermined significance, or VUSs, are not reflective of a pathogenic alteration. And it's also really important because I've had patients come in and say, I was told to have an operation to get a double mastectomy or to get my ovaries removed but there's no pathogenic alteration in the BRCA. It's a variant of undetermined significance, meaning we don't have enough information to guide intervention based on that. In the future, we may, but right now, we wouldn't. So when you do have genetic testing, and this is where either the physician, if they're doing it on their own, has to be invested in explaining the results and really going over things, or you have to have a good genetic counselor who partners with you who can do that, because what you don't want is a patient who has information that they can't interpret, that they don't know how to interpret, or unfortunately they get misinformation somewhere else. Right. And these are very complicated things. So the way I sometimes explain it is, is there's a bus and there's a driver on the bus and they're passengers. So some of the BRCA could be passengers, but they're not driving the bus, they're not driving the cancer. And you may end up taking out the passenger, but you know the bus is still <laughs> driving still along. Going, yeah. And that's, that's very important for uh, patients, uh, patients to know. Tell me a little bit, Dr. Skander. Now, if you are BRCA1 or 2 positive, uh, is your prognosis different uh, than somebody who's BRCA1 or 2 negative? That means the, you know, the, so their survival, is it a more aggressive cancer, or less aggressive cancer? Do they tend to live longer, shorter? So what we know is that patients who are BRCA mutation carriers are more sensitive to platinum agents in general. And the backbone of therapy for ovarian cancer historically was a combination of platinum and paclitaxel. And we also saw that patients who had BRCA mutations, yes, could have a longer disease response and remission. Um, most recently, and probably some of the most exciting data that we've seen in GYN oncology um, as far back as I can remember, is the data looking at frontline PARP inhibitor therapy in BRCA mutated patients. That was presented almost a year ago today at ESMO, and then subsequently led to regulatory approval. But the reason it was so exciting is we were able to show that in patients who had a BRCA mutation that was diagnosed who completed initial chemotherapy and then got put on a PARP inhibitor, over 60% of those patients did not have a disease recurrence three years out from their diagnosis, which is a very dramatic improvement over what we see in historical baseline controls and in the control arm of that clinical trial. So we know that BRCA mutation status is important for the patient and their family. We know now that it's important and really relevant with treatment 
and prognosis and counseling because the conversation I have with a BRCA mutation patient can be very different than one I have with a non-BRCA mutation carrier based on this data looking at these new drugs and the efficacy of these drugs in this patient population.